want rivers to be used in a way that is sustainable, so the environment is not damaged beyond repair. But it's also important that people work together in lots of different ways to help look after rivers and improve riparian zones. Students at Mildura West and Golgol are involved in lots of different activities which help look after the health of the Murray River, like removing weeds and revegetating by planting native trees and shrubs. A hole is dug for the plants. Water saving crystals are scattered around which form a gel and keep moisture around the plant roots. The plant seedlings are carefully removed from their tubes, then planted in the ground and soil loosely packed around and watered in. Finally, mulch is spread across the area where the planting has occurred. This also helps retain the water in the soil by reducing evaporation. It's also important to protect the young seedlings from hungry animals, people on the move and extremes of weather by placing a plastic shield around them. Another way students help look after the river is by monitoring the quality of the water. One way of doing this is to collect bugs from the water. Note down what sort of bugs they are and how many are in a sample. The number and type of bugs gives an idea of how clean the river water is. In Victoria, the Water Watch program is a valuable resource for school and community groups, where Water Watch officers provide equipment and assist with activities like Bug Watch. What the kids um, do when they come down to the river, they work with the Water Watch officer in the district and um, we usually have our bug watch over on Lock Island on the other side and the children all come down and they're given nets and buckets and then um, they collect samples so they might take five or six scoops from different areas like a reeded area or an open area or something like that and put it in a bucket and then they take a spoon and they scoop out each little creature and put it in an ice cream um, sorry an ice block container and any that are the same they put in together so that it helps with their classification and then once we do that each um, creature is attributed with a number according to the, their best health in the river and then at the end there's a, an index that we have that's worked on a formula that we can calculate and find out just how healthy the river is. But it's not only creatures in the water, the flora and fauna found in the riparian zone near the river also indicate how healthy the river and its surrounding habitat are. The Golgol Public School has a section of the river bank which it looks after and students make regular checks on the environment. You have a list of, of the types of animals you might find here and some of the water birds. You only need to indicate if you see them. Uh, we can use our identification book if you're unsure. The binoculars will help you see birds that are out on the island. It is a large bird breeding area. We may not see all of these here today because at certain seasons we're going to see different types of birds and animals. There is also a range of tests that students perform on samples of water from the river which indicate how clean the water is. The water samples are taken away from the bank of the river. Once the sample is collected, one of the tests is a measure of pH, or how acidic or alkaline the water is. Here, pH tape is being used. It is submerged in the water and then checked against a colour chart. Fresh, pure water should have a pH of 7. Anything lower than 7 means the water is acidic. Anything higher means it is alkaline. And the result? Okay, waited a minute. Let's test, let's look at what the result shows. It matches about 
This one, 5.5 roughly. In that green. So is that low or high pH? Low. 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 Low pH? Low. Low. Okay, so when we get back we need to look at that reading and see what that tells us about the pH of our water in this section of the river. Yeah. Okay? And how that might affect the water and the wildlife and the animal life in the water, the marine life. Water temperature is measured with a thermometer. 16 degrees. That's quite um, cool. What we'll be, ex we'll be expecting to see this increase in summer or decrease? Yeah. Increase? Yes. Increase yep. in summer? Yep. Would it be lower in winter? Yeah. Yep. Yes. So our water should be warming up. So if we monitor our water four times a year, the temperature, we might see how the seasons affect the water temperature. Another way the river environment is monitored over time is by the establishment of photo reference points. Well, we've set up five um, point, photo point places where um, we can take photos from um, all the different, the, from different years and we'll show how it's changed. The photos will be shown in like a catalogue, but we'll, in a collection and they're taken twice a year. By comparing photos which many different students from the school will take over a number of years, the changes in visual appearance of sections of the river environment can be monitored. Our aim here is to monitor a very susceptible and also a very important ecological site. We would like to have a long-term vision to monitor it for into the future for quite some time. In the short term we can judge the river's health through our monitoring on a regular basis and in the long term we can see that uh, the data the children collect can form a big picture of the health of this particular part of the river and if that was done in a number of areas we would have a very big picture of how our river is being maintained or how it's being degraded. Other ways in which rivers can be cared for include constructing bollards to prevent people from walking on revegetated areas, maintaining tracks on the riparian zones, and providing information for people that help educate them about looking after the river. <laughs>